Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. A reminder, we do have Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirts available at t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. We also have pullover hoodies. For those of you who, like me, don't feel like a t-shirt season, uh, check it out over at t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. But now we're going to get into the conclusion of the confidential matter. The original air date, September 12th, 13th, and 14th, 1956, episodes 3 through 5. Let's go ahead and take a listen. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Hector, Mr. Dollar. Hector? Hector Nerkley the Drakeley Arms Apartments. You were here night before last inquiring about the late Mr. Morgan. Oh, yes, I remember. What can I do for you, Mr. Nerkley? Oh, it's really quite the other way around. All right, what can you do for me? Well, I can give you some very interesting information if you care to come over here. Why can't you give it to me on the phone? I'll tell you exactly why, Mr. Dollar, when you come over. Oh, for the love of Pete. Temper, temper. And why not? A month ago, the best friend I had in the world drove his car off a cliff into the Pacific. And his body's still out there in the ocean somewhere. It's never been recovered. Mr. Dollar. Then it turns out he was $80,000 short in his accounts. I can't find the money, you know, the woman he was running around with before his death. I can't find out anything. And now if I want some... In- All right, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Francisco. To the home office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the confidential matter. Expense account continued. Item nine, a dollar and seventy cents taxi from my hotel to the Drakeley Arms Apartments. A snooty high-priced joint where Ed Morgan had lived during the last four months of his life. Ed Morgan, a pipe and slippers bachelor who'd suddenly and strangely turned to champagne cocktails and high living. Who, as head of an insurance claims office, had found a way of swindling his employer out of $80,000 in four months. And who died a month ago as mysteriously as he'd lived. This was the man who at the moment was my assignment. Whose past I was supposed to uncover. And he was also the man who'd been my lifelong friend. Good evening, Mr. Dollar. My, you did make excellent time. Now look, if this turns out to be a runaround, so help me out. All right. All right, you said you had some very important information that couldn't be discussed over the phone. Well, it could have been discussed, of course. But, well, this information has to do with one of our guests, Mr. Dollar. A certain lovely young widow whom you seemed most concerned about the last time. Nikki Barrett. Quite. Has she come back? Is she here? I'm afraid not. Then what is it? First, I must ask you what your intentions are toward Mrs. Barrett. Well, I'm not going to marry her. Please, I hardly thought you were. All right, then what's the point? Simply this. I happen to be in a position to put you in touch with Mrs. Barrett. You know where she's hiding out? Hiding out? All right, I'll drop the implication. You know where she is. I do. Well, then let's have it. Why do you wish to find her? Because she's the only lead I've got on the Morgan case. She and Ed were thicker than thieves during the four months before his death. And she was with him the night he was killed. Earlier in the evening, at least. Are you going to have her arrested? No, no. I just want to ask her some questions. I've got no case against her. Not yet, at least. Mr. Dollar... Can I depend upon you in one very important respect? What's that? Under no circumstances must you let Mrs. Barrett know that I told you where she is. 
What's the matter? Afraid the board of directors would bust you to bellhop and strip off your gardenia? That is not amusing. Nor too improbable, as a matter of fact. After all, the watchword of the Drakely Arms is discretion. Yeah, well, all right. It's a deal. I won't tell her. Of course, there is one more little detail. Oh, now what? Well, the last time you requested information from me, Mr. Dollar, you were kind enough and uh, generous enough. Uh, well, really, this is a bit awkward. What is it, Hector? Is the gardenia fund getting low? Well, you did say, as I recall, that it was merely an item in an expense account. All right. Here's another 20 bucks. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, what about Nikki Barrett? Well, we just received a letter from Mrs. Barrett. She asks that her mail be forwarded to her in care of American Express. Panama City, Panama. Item 10, $20, gratuity. Item 11, $388.45, hotels, some telegrams, incidentals in San Francisco, and plane fare to Panama. I'd sent wires ahead before I left the States. It wasn't until after I'd cleared customs and was heading for the American Express office that I was certain the messages had produced any results. Uh, Dispense me, por favor. Yeah? You are uh, Senor Johnny Dollar from the Estados, no? That's right. Capitan Garcia Ramulio of the Panama Federal Police. Oh. As you sort of me, senor. Oh, glad to know you, Captain. I am honored, senor. We have received your telegram, and I have been instructed to cooperate with you very intensive. Well, it may take just that. Now, about the woman I described in the telegram. The Senora Barrett. Oh, Santa Madre, what a beautiful woman. So I've heard. You have not uh, had the pleasure of acquainting her? Not yet. The best of your life is before you in that case. Then I'll speed up and get to it. So you've already located her, huh? Oh, but of course, Senor. She has not um, changed her name, as you think, perhaps. So it was most simple. Good. Glad I didn't cause you too much trouble. Trouble? Senor, merely to gaze upon such a one is worth a lifetime of trouble. Which is exactly what it caused a couple of guys I know. Uh, such eyes, such hair, such lips, yeah. such... Yeah, uh, well, uh, what do you say uh, we... Forgive uh, me, senor. I am carried away with it. Well, where is this living little doll staked out at the moment? She is registered at the Hotel Primeso, uh, room 17. Uh, Hotel Primeso? This is not the most unusual, I think. What do you mean? The Primeso is one hotel very small, which is uh, located on the waterfront. It's most for sailors, fishermen. I see. The beautiful tourist, or one would think to find in a hotel of well, more elegance. She may be deliberately staying away from the tourist belt. Yes, sabe, senor. Who can tell the reasons of a woman? Yeah. Is she living there alone? So I have been informed. You expect someone with her? I don't know what to expect. I don't even know why she came here. I'm moving in blind. Uh, see, life is most difficult at times. Uh, you didn't talk to her, did you? Let her know you were checking on her? Please, senor. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I had to be sure. She is most entirely without suspicion. Good, good. Well, I suppose I'd better check into a hotel first. Uh, then what are your plans, senor? I don't know exactly. I'll talk to her, try to get some answers. And from there on, I'll just have to call it as I go. I hope uh, this lovely lady has not involved in some uh, serious crime. I hope not, too. But I wouldn't bet much on it. Item 12, $8, taxi, flat rate for the rest of the day. And by the time I checked into a hotel and showered and changed, the rest of the day didn't have long to go. The Hotel Promesa was on the waterfront, as Captain Garcia had said, and some distance from town. But although it wasn't a tourist trap, neither was it quite the sailor's flop house I'd been led to expect. It was built native style with bamboo shutters and wide verandas, half buried in a thicket of mango and banana. Five bucks bought me the desk clerk's undying affection, and two minutes later I stood unannounced at the door of room 17. Just a minute. It's about time. I ordered that ice at least a... I thought you were the bellboy. No. The name is Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Mind if I come in, Mrs. Barrett? What for? Well, it would be more comfortable than trying to talk out here in the veranda. What is it you want to talk about? A friend of mine, name of Ed Morgan. All right. Come on in. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. I'd offer you a drink, but there's no ice. 
And it isn't this kind of heat. I don't I'm... care for a drink, thanks. You'd think it would cool off after the sun goes down, but it doesn't. At least not very much. Sometimes a breeze comes up from the... From... What are you staring at, Mr. Dollar? You. Why? I'd had such glowing reports about you that I was sure they were exaggerated. They weren't. Thanks. And did you come all the way down here just to check those glowing reports? How do you know I came all the way down here? What do you mean? Maybe I live here. No. I've heard of you before. Ed, Mr. Morgan used to talk about you. Was it Ed or Mr. Morgan? You don't miss much, do you? I try not to. It was Ed, as you undoubtedly knew. Yes, I knew. But I wasn't sure why. Why? Why he lost his head. Now that I've seen you, I can understand. Who wouldn't? Oh, please. I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Dollar. Ever since that terrible accident, there's been only one thing I've wanted. To forget. Well, I'm sorry to have to bring up unpleasant memories, Mrs. Barrett, but I've got to ask you some questions. There's nothing... The night of his death, what time did he leave you? What do you mean? You were together earlier in the evening. You left the bar at the Drakeley Arms together at 9 o'clock, but shortly after midnight, when Ed ran his car off a cliff into the Pacific, he was apparently alone. We went to dinner, then he brought me back to the apartment house. He was going to Half Moon Bay to see a client. That's why he happened to be on that road. I don't want to talk about it, Mr. Dollar. It's horrible to think of him dying that way. His body's still out there in the ocean somewhere. That's why I came down here. To get away and try to forget. And you thought quite a lot of him, huh? We were going to be married. I see. Well, it's, uh, it's too bad it didn't work out with all the wealth Ed had and the beauty you wealth. have. Why, well, I... I had the idea that he just worked for an insurance company. And lived the way he did? Oh, come now, Mrs. Barrett. Well, actually, I didn't really consider it. My husband had left me quite well off. How long were you married before he died? Only ten months. Oh, you do have bad luck, don't you? I don't think this attitude of yours... Relax. Is... Here, have a cigarette. I don't smoke. Oh? Do you mind if I do? No, of course not. Thanks. Do you have a suite here, Mrs. Barrett, or just this one room? Just this room. Why? Oh, and then this door must lead to the bath. What do you think you're doing? Empty, huh? Of course it's empty. Uh-huh. Then the other possibility is that closet. Stay away from there. When I came in, there was cigarette smoke in the air, stubs in the ashtray. There's no one here. Stay away from there. Oh, look, Mrs. Barrett, turning out the lights may be romantic, but it's not the idea of... What? You... I was still conscious but groggy, and I couldn't seem to get off the floor. I heard someone moving, heard the door to the veranda open and close. I shook my head, tried to clear it. I finally staggered to my feet and found the light switch. Nicky Barrett was cowering back against the wall, staring at me, scared but not saying anything. I stumbled toward the door. The veranda was empty. There was no sign of movement in the shadows. So there was somebody hiding in that closet. No. There wasn't anybody here. I'm the one who hit you. You'd have to have a fist three times your size. It's true. Forget it. I know the game now. I should have known it a lot sooner. You're wrong. There's only one person in this world who tears cigarettes apart and shreds the paper that way. No! The two of you, in on it together. They didn't find his body because there wasn't anybody to find. He's still alive. He was right here in this room. That was Ed Morgan. Johnny Dollar. This is Capitan Garcia Ramulio of the Panama Federal Police. Good. Your sergeant said he could locate you in a matter of minutes. I am never lost from contact, senor. You have uh, talked with the beautiful turista, no? I have talked with her, yes, and I ended up getting socked in the jaw. Uh, these Americano women are so very much athletics. No, she didn't hit me. It was a guy who was hiding out in a closet. I understand, senor. Somehow I doubt it. Look, Garcia, it was the man I came down here to question her about. I'm sure of it. Senor, you have to tell me... Yeah, I know. Apparently his death was faked. I think he's here, hiding out somewhere in Panama City. Do you think you can find him? When 
my men make this search, senor, even a little dog could not escape. Then go to it. His name is Ed Morgan, but he may be using another one. The charge is embezzlement. You know his description, senor? I ought to. He's been one of my best friends for years. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Panama, to the home office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the confidential matter. Expense account continued. Item 14, $12.85, telegram to Hartford, advising them that the case had turned in a completely new direction. I'd taken the case with the idea of digging up a man's past, a man who had been one of my best friends. Of finding out why, after a life of complete honesty and loyalty to his company, he had suddenly gone wrong and embezzled $80,000. I'd found out that part of the why was probably a lovely young widow named Nikki Barrett. But I'd found out more. The man we thought dead, who'd supposedly drowned when his car went off a cliff into the Pacific Ocean, was still alive. So now it was a matter of filing charges, requesting extradition from Panama, and of course capturing the fugitive. That I left to Captain Garcia for the moment and went to bed. When I came down to breakfast the next morning, I still hadn't heard back from Garcia. But I did get a return engagement from my little playmate of the night before. Good morning, Johnny. Hmm? Oh, well. Good morning, Mrs. Barrett. I came into town early especially to see you. Why? A deep concern as to whether I survived that sock in the jaw? No. No concern, really. I imagine you have a pretty tough jaw. Do you mind if I sit down? If you promise not to double up your fist. I can explain that, Johnny. With all night to think about it? Yeah, I bet you can. How about some breakfast? I don't really... They got a special this morning. Fried fish and papaya. Ooh. Tastes even worse than it sounds. No, I'll just have some coffee. That we already have. Sugar, cream? Just black. Thank you. All right, you're on. Spin it up. Well... I'll admit it was silly to claim I was the one who hit you last night. Of course it was silly. I know who hit me. You don't. It was Ed Morgan. He was hiding in the closet in your hotel room. You're wrong, Johnny. It, you don't mind if I call you Johnny, do you? I mean, you and Ed were such close friends. I feel I almost know you. You could be wrong, Mrs. Barrett. I used to think I knew Ed until he met you and decided to tap the till for 80 grand. All right, call me Johnny if it gives you more confidence in your act. It's not an act. Okay, if you didn't hit me and Ed didn't, then who was it? Let's just say it was a friend. (laughs) He wasn't very friendly to me. He misunderstood you coming there. He shouldn't have been there himself. He's, well, he's married and not that I knew it, though, until last night. (laughs) That's not a bad attempt, Mrs. Barrett, at a snow job, but I still don't buy it. Better drink your coffee. Johnny... Ed was drowned in San Francisco when his car ran off into the ocean. He's dead. How can he be dead in San Francisco and still be tearing up cigarettes in Panama? I did that. You don't even smoke. But the man who was there last night does. And I tore the cigarettes in that peculiar way. I picked up the habit from Ed. I just did it absentmindedly, I guess. Well, this gets better as it goes along. I'm not lying. It's true. No, I mean this fish and papaya. I guess you just have to get used to the mixture. Please, Johnny. You're not even touching your coffee. If I drink it, will you please listen to me? I am listening to you. I just don't believe you. Look, we all make mistakes. Last night, you made a guess. You thought that was Ed, but you were wrong. So why be stubborn about it and cause a lot of unnecessary trouble? Let's forget it and be friends. Can't afford it, sweetie. I haven't got that kind of money. Do you think I sell my friendship? It cost Ed $80,000 of the company's money. No. How much of that did you get? Half of it? No. More than half of it? No, I don't know what you're talking about. How much does he have left now? Stop it! Stop saying such things. All right. Can't you understand? Once and for all, Ed isn't here. Nor anywhere else. He's dead. No, he isn't. But I wish to heaven he were. What do you mean? Just that. He was your friend. That's right. He was my friend. When I heard about his accident, heard he'd been killed, it hit hard. It hurt plenty. 
And I guess it hurt even more when I learned he'd been stealing from the company. Johnny. So I took the job of digging into the mess and trying to find some answers. I didn't want the job, didn't want any part of it, but I took it anyway. Somebody had to do it. And he had been my friend once. And then I find out he's still alive. No, See, Johnny. See, so it means now I've got to catch him and take him back to stand trial. And that's going to be even tougher than facing his death and the fact he was a crook. If Ed were alive, you'd take him back? Help send him to prison like any other common criminal? That's what he is, isn't he? But he was your friend. Oh, skip it. You wouldn't understand. I might, if you'd let me try. The only thing you're trying to do, Mrs. Barrett, is to con me into thinking I might possibly be wrong. Thinking maybe it was somebody else in your room last night. I told the you. The idea is to throw me off balance just long enough so the two of you can make a run for it. Nice try, only it won't work, so knock it off. Ed and I were going to be married, Johnny. And the shock of his death... I said skip com- it. Ed used to talk about you. He told me you were this way. Hard and cold and ruthless. And then he has no excuse. He knew what to expect. But I didn't believe it. I didn't think anyone could Buenos be... Buenos senor. Mm-hmm. Oh, good morning. I don't believe you've met my companion. I have not been so fortunate, senor. This is Captain Garcia of the Panama Police, Mrs. Barrett. Hello. I'm greatly honored, senora. Might be a good idea to take a careful look at her, Garcia. You will probably be arresting her in the next day or so as an accomplice to fraud. Let us hope such regrettable necessity is not happen. Thank you, Captain. I'm sure it won't. Mr. Dollar has a rather boorish sense of humor. I comprehend, senora. Uh, Mr. Dollar, it is possible, perhaps, that uh, I speak a little with you? Yeah, sure. I imagine Mrs. Barrett will be happy to excuse me at this point. Hasta la vista, senora. Remember, Johnny, he was your friend. I did not wish to mention this matter before the senora. Oh? I think it's better she's not here. Here what? Have you turned up something? Yes, si, senora. I have to tell you, not even the little dog can hide from Garcia. So? We have located this man, Ed Morgan. I got into the police car with Captain Garcia, and we drove out of town and followed the shoreline for about six miles. Then we pulled up near a cluster of rickety wharves built around the edge of a tiny inlet. There were numerous native fishing boats tied against the pilings, but no village, no shacks, nor any other sign of a habitation. Garcia cut the motor and lit a cigarette. Pues aquí estamos. Here we are, senor. Here? He's hiding out here? Si, senor. He's live on one of the little fishing boats which are tied to the wharf. The number three one there, which is blue painted, you see? Yeah, I see it. Well, a place like this would be safer than a hotel. You're pretty sure it's him. Pues, Miguel Ronesto, who is on the boat, said this man come out here one month ago. He paid Miguel much money just to live on the boat, tie up at shore. And he is like you described, senor. I think so is him. All right. I'll go on board and talk to him. And uh, I think I'd better go along, Garcia. Whatever you wish, senor. I wait for you here. Okay. Ed? Ed Morgan. Ed? I know you're here, so you might as well answer. Cabin's unlocked. Come on down. Been a long time, man. Yeah, it has. Sorry the place is so littered up. Temporary quarters, you understand? Sit down. Thanks. Johnny, why did it have to be you? It had to be somebody, Ed, sooner or later. You should have known that. But not you. How'd you get onto me? I traced Mrs. Barrett down here. I thought you were dead until last night. She wasn't supposed to show here for six months. And last week, here she was. Couldn't wait. Why did you do it, Ed? You wouldn't understand. You've always had dames crazy about you without lifting a hand. But not me. This face always stopped him. Sure, I used to laugh about it, but... Well, you just wouldn't understand. And this woman was different, is that it? Nikki fell as hard as I did. I didn't know women like her even existed. She's for me all the way. Is she worth the price tag? $80,000? Cut it, Johnny. It's not that way. It's just that Nikki had always lived well, and I had to live that way, too, in order to be around her. I got in further and further, and finally I was in too deep to pull out. Did she know you were stealing from the company? Not at first. 
The blame's all mine, Johnny, not hers. You picked your own apples, is that it? Call it that. And I didn't spend all that money. We decided to get out of the country, start a new life together. I figured I'd need that much. And Nikki agreed to that plan? Sure. That's why she's here. She sold out and came on down. Only she didn't, Ed. She still has her apartment in San Francisco. You're wrong, Johnny. She sold her furniture, her clothes, everything. The stuff is all there, Ed. I saw it. You're lying, Johnny. She pulled stakes. She told me. Okay, she told you. I guess you know why I'm here. I know why you think you're here. Hold it, Johnny. Don't move. I've had this gun on you since you came on board. I know you have. But I wonder if you'd really use it. Don't try to find out. And don't tell me I'm in a spot. I know that. But I'm going on as far as I can. And if I have to kill to do it, then I'll kill. Maybe I could have stopped him. Maybe he wouldn't have fired. I don't know. And for one reason or another, I didn't feel much like finding out. I let him go. He backed out of the cabin hatch and bolted it on the outside. I heard him cross the deck and run along the wharf. And I waited for Garcia to call out to challenge him. The only sound was a car motor starting up and speeding away. Then I heard somebody come running down the wharf. Senor Dollar! Get the door open, Garcia. Where is he? What happened? He take the car, senor. He's me to blame. I, I am not alert. Before I know it, Never he's... mind. Where's the nearest telephone? Two miles, senor. Two miles? How do we get there? But how else, senor? We walk? Johnny Dollar. Capitan Garcia Ramulio, senor. Oh, Garcia. At the Panama Federal Police. Tell me, have senor, you... Senor, the most intensive troubles are being extended in this matter. Which means you haven't found him yet. Every man of the police is active alert. I'm happy to hear it. You may rest assured, senor, that the capture of this dangerous Americano gangster is occur at any moment. Have you found any trace of him? Senor, I wish to advise you that the entire resource of my policia is at the reposal of our good neighbor of the north. Thank you very much. Do you know where he's headed? It is only by cooperation that our two great... Garcia. Nations... See, si, senor. Do you have any idea at all what's happened to Ed Morgan? No, senor. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Panama, to the Home Office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the confidential matter. Expense account, final page. <laughs> Item 15, a dollar and ten cents, taxi from my hotel to Plaza Bolivar in the office of Captain Garcia, Commandante of Police. It had been over an hour and a half since I'd let Ed Morgan point a gun at me and escape from the tiny fishing boat where he'd been hiding out for the past month. I'd expected the police to capture him within 30 minutes. There were only two highways out, and they'd both been blockaded immediately. But somehow, Ed, driving a stolen police car, had escaped the net. In fact, he'd done more than merely escape, as I discovered when I walked into the massive stone police headquarters. Ah, uh, Senor Dollar, pleased to sit you down. Thanks. The most surprised thing is, of course, Senor. What do you mean? You will remember you say it's a fine idea to keep watch at the hotel of the Senora Barrett. Yeah, I thought Ed might try to get in touch with her. Bueno, see. Si. So I do this thing. I send two men and they watch for one hour. Que bobos, they're fools. Why so? They do not see the Senor Morgan. They do not see the Senora Barrett. But only after one hour do they think to talk with the manager. You know what he say? What? Senor Morgan come five minutes before they do and he take the Senora away in the car. What the devil for? Quien sabe, Senor. Driving a stolen car and just one job ahead of the police and he risks his neck to go after her? Why? Pues a veces el amor le vuelve loco a un hombre. Meaning? This love is sometime make a man crazy in the head. I'll buy that one. It's something I am not understand so good, senor. What's that? How is it you are know all about this criminal? He wasn't always a criminal, Garcia. He was one of my best friends for 12 years. Uh, then I am much sympathy with you, senor. It's too unfortunate that you are have the job for arresting. Well, I didn't know he was alive when I took the job. Que dice? The company ran an audit on his books and found an 80 grand shortage. I went to San Francisco to find out what happened to the money. Ed was supposedly dead at the time. We all thought so. 
Then I do not understand why you have come here to Panama. I came to talk to this Nicky Barrett, the woman he'd been running around with. I stumbled onto him by luck or accident or whatever you want to call it. Que curiosa es la vida. To live is like to fish, senor. One is never certain what he may pull up on the hook. Well, I've pulled up one here and I'd like to throw it back. But I guess you don't have much choice when you are. Dispense me, por favor. Bueno. Eh? Que dice? Sí, sí, yo sé. Cerca del mar. Santa madre, que tan lejos. What is it, Garcia? Ay, que lastima. Sí, cuidela bien. Venemos ahorita. Sí, adiós. What's wrong? What's happened? Senor Morgan and the senora, they have been found. Where? They have tried to escape by the old road on the cliff. It's abandoned, very dangerous. They are miss one bad curve and go into the ocean. Into the ocean? Sí, senor. The car is under 10 meters of water. There is no sign of life. Expense account item 16, $75, charter fee and one power launch. This included the services of a diver and line tender. We were just plain lucky on this one. A salvage company happened to be working in the port and had a man and equipment free at the moment. We took off along the coastline and in less than an hour we dropped anchor over the wreck. And the diver had been lowered beneath the surface. The sea was calm against the rocks. But the water wasn't clear enough to see more than just the outline of the car lying over 30 feet down on the bottom. While we waited for the diver to come back up, I glanced toward the high cliff towering above us. A month ago, there'd been another cliff like that in San Francisco. Like I say, senor, life is too strange sometimes. So is death. This man, this woman, they meet, they look one at each other, and what are they think? A lot of things, maybe. But not that they end up here, like this. How true it is, senor. Who can ever know if one day he will come Wait a to... a second. Say... The diver's coming up. I uh, see. It's too bad he doesn't have the system of telephone. In this case, we can talk on the water. We didn't have time to rig it up. Well, we'll soon know, I guess. I am most sorry for you, senor Dollar, that your friend has to die like this. I faced the idea of his death a month ago and accepted it. Then I had to face some other things about him. Another shark now doesn't seem to have much meaning. It's just a matter of... Hey, there's the diver. He's up at the rail. Hey, let me give you a hand with that faceplate. I'll work on this side. It's very complicated, this diving business. Yeah. Well, this is kind of an old-fashioned rig. They got suits now with self-contained oxygen, independent control. Stuff the frogmen developed during and after the war. Yeah, it is. All right. There we go. All right, now, what'd you find? Oh, let me get a breath of raw air first. Oh, better get that compressor motor fixed. Throws down more CO than oxygen. Come on, come on, how to look. That dollar, it's a mess. That car must have rolled over a dozen times coming down that cliff. All cracked up. Yeah, but what about... One door's half off and flattened back. On the glass is slivered. Looks like it had been bombed instead of just wrecked. Senor, is the... Yeah, the body of the woman is inside, but... There's no chance of getting it out without dropping a grappler and seeing if we can roll the car over. And the man? Is he? Nope. Just the woman. That's the only one down there. Again, the same pattern. A car plunging off a cliff into the ocean and a body missing from it. But this time I was sure it wasn't faked. Ed wouldn't have done a thing like that to Nicky. Not to Nicky. And yet his body was not in the wreck. I looked again at the high wall of the cliff, steep but not vertical. A car would have rolled and bounced coming down, as the diver had said. And one door was torn half off. The glass was smashed out. It was a possibility, as far as I could see, the only possibility. I had the captain run the launch in close. Then I jumped onto the rocks and started to climb. The slope was gentler than it had looked from the water. And the surface was broken by ravines. Clumps and thickets of tropical plants clung to the shelves and the going was rough. A long ways from impossible. I made it halfway to the top when I found him, jammed in the trough of a gully. Broken, badly hurt, but still alive. Barely alive. That you, Johnny? Yeah. Easy now, Ed. Let me get a foothold here. We didn't make it, Johnny. You didn't have a chance, Ed. You should have realized. I knew. Maybe I knew all along. Better not try to talk. It's kind of funny when you think about it. I mean, what happened here, just like we did it in San Francisco. Only this time it's real. Lost control. Yeah, this time it's real. 
Now, you lie still there. There are police on the road up above. We'll get some ropes down have you out of here before you know it. Forget it, Johnny. It's no use. I'm all smashed inside. I can't even move. All right. Maybe you got a broken bone or two, but that's no reason to... Don't lie to me, Johnny. I'm dying. We both know it. Am I right or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid you're right. Doesn't matter anymore. Oh, Ed. Tell me, is... Is Nikki... She's dead. No. You're right about her, Johnny. Forget it, will you? Forget it. I made her come with me in the car. Held a gun on her. She got mad. Scared. She spilled the whole story. Ed, it doesn't make any difference now. It's funny. I thought she came down here before she was supposed to because she just couldn't wait to join me. But she only came to get the rest of the money. She wasn't planning to stay. Listen to me, Ed. This kind of talk She won't... didn't love me. Never did. She admitted it right before we went off the cliff. But I thought she did, Johnny, for a while. And nobody else ever let me even think it. Please, Ed, why don't you try to forget about it? You know something, Johnny? What? If I was to go back, I think I'd do the same thing again. Nikki, the way she could be when she wanted to, it gets you. Got me, anyway. It's crazy. Maybe there's just no answer for a guy like me. Except this. I don't know, Ed. I'm not a judge. Kind of figures, you know. Nikki dying, too. I bought her and paid for her. I at least ought to be able to take her with me. After all, I... <laughs> Easy now. The money. What's left of it? It's inside my coat. Give it to Moore. Tell him I'm sorry. Make him understand. He will, Ed. You too, Johnny. I'm... I'm sorry. I guess I don't know what else to say. Oh, forget it. But I... Still think I'd do it all over again. <laughs> crazy, eh? There are times we all go a little crazy. I got no right to ask, but if you would, I'd sure appreciate it. I mean, if you just shake hands with me. Oh, sure, Ed. Here you go. It's funny, I. I can't, can't find your hand. It, it's dark. I, I can't see where... Right here, Red. Right here. Oh. I shake you ugly old son of a gun. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks for not... For not... Mm -hmm. So long, Ed. Item 17, $487.25, hotel and incidentals in Panama and transportation back to the States. Expense account total, $912.61. Am forwarding under separate cover by American Express, insured $62,112.30. End of account, end of report. Remarks? No, Mort, not on this one. Ed Morgan was my friend. The report stands. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the imperfect alibi matter. A real weirdy, where a big lie turns out to be the one real truth in the case. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield. 
It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jack Edwards, Russell Thorson, Furley Mitchell, Stacey Harris, Bob Miller, Harry Bartell, Victor Perrin, and Frank Gerstle. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hugh Brundig speaking. Welcome back. Another solid serial. When it comes to serials adapted from half-hour stories, I've talked about those who say that these serials have merely been padded. I wouldn't argue with someone who said that too much on something like the open town matter, and the Cranesburg matter definitely was, although in my mind that had more to do with it being a six-parter instead of a five-parter. However, this is a story that, to me, really benefits from a longer run time. The confidential matter works as a detective story, but also at its core it has a really strong emotional note. This is a case that puts Johnny through the ringer, and the serial format allows it to be beautifully explored in all of its messiness. It's a story about friendship and how well you can actually know a friend and what it's like when things go bad and they do something totally out of character. And Johnny had no idea how really insecure Ed was about his looks and about his lack of romantic prospects. I don't think that's something most guys would admit to even today. And Ed did some things that really violated Johnny's whole idea of who he was. Yet Johnny was still there for the, him as best he could be, particularly at the end. Ed Morgan was my friend. The report stands, sums it up. Being a friend means being there when people are wrong. It doesn't mean enabling. It doesn't mean turning away or covering up, but doing what's right by the person and by the people they've harmed. But of course, friends gone bad would uh, tend to disagree. Well, listener comments and feedback now, and we start with listener comments regarding the Cranesburg matter. And we start with Julie, who writes, Hi, Adam. I've been listening long enough that sometimes the stories start to sound familiar. I really enjoyed this episode, even though I suspected I knew the ending, because Bob Bailey obviously had a fun time with the delivery of some of the lines in the SAR uh, chasm of his voice. He had some zingers in this one. I really enjoyed it. And I'm just always amazed at Virginia Gregg. Can we just give a shout out to her? I mean, Bob Bailey is really amazing, but he does the same voice every week. Virginia Gregg plays so many different characters, and you wouldn't know it until you hear the credits. Thank you so much, Adam, for your comments and your podcast. It's really enjoyable, and you give a lot of great insight. I've learned a lot about old-time radio and had so many enjoyable hours. Well, Thank you so much, Julie. Delia on Instagram writes, It's one of my favorites. And Greg writes, Great story. It's beautiful to watch a con man and a con woman try to con each other. Uh, thanks so much, Greg. Uh, and I would definitely agree. Particularly if you do a good job having us only really aware that one of them is trying to con the other. And certainly in the Cranesburg matter, we knew 
I, I think most listeners would know that the Cranes were up to something. You know, based on the whole idea of them being this old money family that didn't have any money anymore. But it had a great twist with the other guy also being a con man. And then we have a comment regarding the final episode of the Crystal Lake Matter from Ronser, who gave us that wonderful uh, conversation about Bill Cullen. I think it was a week ago. Uh, he comments on uh, the fu- conclusion, of course it had to be Bill Bixby. Well, I think that Jack Johnstone could have known Bill Cullen. I doubt he knew Bill Bixby since his career didn't really get started until the early 60s. And he was just a 22-year-old kid at the time of this radio episode. All right, well now it's time to thank our Patreon supporters of the day. And since this is the first Friday in February, we're thanking Patreon supporters who have been supporting the podcast for five years this month. And I want to thank Will, supporting the podcast at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month, and Chris, supporting the show at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month for being Patreon supporters since February of 2019. Thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please be sure to follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. All those great things that help the channel to grow. We'll be back on Tuesday with another Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial. But join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet, where... His name was Norman Eugene Fisher, and he was six years of age last April. Like all young boys his age, his imagination ran away with him. What would be only a minor detail to an adult witness assumed tremendous proportion to Norman's young mind. He told us his story three times. Each time he elaborated a little more until what he claimed was the truth could only have been figments of a small child's imagination. Ben and I, together with Gonzalez and Pena, talked with the boy for another hour. We were getting tired, but Norman enjoyed his position as star witness. Once more, Norman, please, try to remember it as it really happened. It was just like I said. Let me try, Jess. Go ahead, Romero. Um, you did see it happen this afternoon, didn't you, Norman? Yes, sir, I did. Good. Now, you were on your way home from the store. Oh, no, sir. I was running away from a man. He was chasing me. But you just told us, Norman, that you were on your way home from the store. Oh, no, sir. That was yesterday. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.